Hey now, Steve Stevens for Bonic Buzz. We're here at Art's Radio Dream Launch 10th anniversary here at Steve Rensick's Rock and Roll Mansion. The event features many icons in the radio and record industry, so let's go see who we can talk to. So Neil, you've done so much voiceover, radio and TV, we'll get through it all. But first, I want to know where your passion for voiceover kind of came from. Were you watching a certain cartoon or radio program just imitating it as a kid, or where did it come from? Well, as I chronicle in my new book, Vocal Recall, The Life in Radio and Voiceovers, and I should have brought one of the cards up and stick it in the lens, but I won't. If you're interested, go to www.neilbook.com. That's okay. the only plug I'll put in. Yeah. Actually, I'm an imposter. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm a scout from the television series Hoarders. Oh. <laughs> and this, here, this Resnick guy <laughs> is, is a gold mine. This yeah. is not an episode. This is a mini-series. <laughs> uh, actually, it's an amazing, yeah. amazing place, and it's, it's, it's a, a lot of fun to get to come here. Mm -hmm. And I, I enjoy it every time. And it's also so nice to be around all these wonderful people who I don't happen to know personally. Mm -hmm. I was kind of hoping I would get to know them, but it didn't work mm -hmm. out. And I'm, well, I'm not upset. That's OK. That's all right. Well, I'm... speaking of passions, I love cartoons in Why the 80s. I'll answer your question. I'll answer your oh, question. Yeah, sorry. It, it, as I chronicle in the book, I won't plug it again. Yeah. Uh, it started as a child. I would listen to the radio. We didn't have a television. And I found myself endlessly fascinated by the different voices I would hear. Okay. And at a certain point, I started trying to imitate them. And then I started to imitate some of the voices I heard on children's television shows, that, or radio shows, I should say, that were exaggerated, almost cartoonish. Mm -hmm. And uh, with no thought of making a living, just, you know, some kids build model airplanes. I sat in my room and did a stupid voice. <laughs> and and that, that really was the beginning. Nice. And, um, and where did you grow up? Uh, born in London, England. Okay. At the age of two, we moved to Canada. I was in Montreal up to the, about the age of 12. Then we came to California. That was a shock. And what year did you come here? Uh, 1957. Okay. And uh, a year or so in Long Beach, then down to San Diego, where I finished high school and then I left home and the long uh, journey began. Okay, so tell us about your, your, your career. Where did it start? I started uh, basically in, in Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay. From there I went to Lewiston, Idaho, and then from there I went to Honolulu. Oh. And I did sort of the Great Pacific Circle route, Honolulu, San Diego, San Francisco, and finally Los Angeles. Oh, wow. And the last radio work was at the old 710 KMPC in Los Angeles, owned and operated by the singing cowboy Gene Autry. <laughs> so, and then I guess in the 80s is when you started your voiceover career? Or? Yes, I came to Los Angeles with the goal of getting out of the radio business and getting into the voiceover business. So for about five years, I was sort of following both streams. And then I began to realize about 1984, 1985, that I was actually making far more money outside the building than inside the building. Oh. And at a certain point, I said, this is enough with the radio. And I tendered my resignation. And, mm -hmm. and I, I haven't had a job since. OK, well, let's get into your animation career, because I'm a huge passion about animation, especially all the stuff in the 80s. You've done Transformers, G.I. Joe, and what else? Voltron. Voltron. Yes. Okay. And what voices did you do for each show? In Voltron, I was Commander Keith. I think he's the Red Lion. He's the guy who kind of sounds really eager and excited. Yeah. And I also did the character of Pidge. I don't uh, know if you remember Pidge. I remember Pidge. Yeah, I did that one. And in Transformers, I was Springer. Mm -hmm. And he had the big line in uh, in the movie, the tra Transformers, the animated movie, where oh, he movie. said the famous line, I've, I've got better things to do to that. Blah, blah, blah. I got things to do today than die. Yeah. Take two, Wally. Yeah. <laughs> I've got better things to do tonight than die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was great. And who, who else in Transformers? Well, I was Hook, who was uh, one of the Constructicons, yes. and he sounded something like this. And then I did uh, Slag and Bone Crusher. Slag was a high throat ripper <laughs> like this. And Bone Crusher was a low throat ripper like this. Wow, so you did a lot of the like Yeah. yeah. Now, the Transformers and G.I. Joe, was that like pretty much the same voice actors? Because I'm friends with Greg Berg, who did Grimlock. He also did a lot of the G.I. Joe ones, too. So it was the same people running that? Well, the, the sh both of those shows were directed by a guy named Wally Burr. Okay. And he, he didn't choose the actors, but he chose the people who got to audition. Okay. And so, yes, it was a very... There are people who only worked one or the other, but 
a lot of the actors were in both of them, and they were recording more or less simultaneously. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah, Very a lot cool. of the same people. Well, Neil, thank you so much. I could talk to you all day about your animation radio career, so thank you so much.